open your Bibles, if you will, to the first chapter, I mean the second chapter of the first epistle of Peter, the apostle, to the church general. Hallelujah. Does that sound real spiritual? Okay. Uh, let's look right now. Go to the first book of Peter, chapter 2, verse 24, his letter to everybody. Peter writing here says, Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. Also read, looking over to Isaiah, the 53rd chapter. This is the quote, Peter, Peter quoting Isaiah 53 here. Glory to God. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 3 says, He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. That word Greek in the Hebrew can be translated sick, a man acquainted with sickness. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs or sicknesses, carried our sorrows, or that could be translated pains. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. Now, real simple. I mean, when you, when you take uh, these verses, you understand Peter says were healed. Isaiah says are healed. Isaiah speaking and prophetically, speaking or writing prophetically and writing under prophetic anointing. He's declaring something that is to come that by his stripes we are healed that will happen. Peter looking back at the cross and looking back at the redemptive work of Christ is not speaking prophetically but speaking in, in completion of pro prophecy. And so he says by his stripes we were healed. All right. Yet referring to the same thing that is the sacrifice of Jesus Christ as the Lamb of God slain for the foundation of the world. Go if you will over to Matthew's Gospel the 8th chapter. Matthew chapter 8. It says, verse 16, when the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his word, and healed all that were sick, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, himself took our infirmities, and bare our sicknesses. Now, so here we have uh, the Bible's own commentary on the Bible. I like that. I like it when the Word of God has its own commentary about itself. Because, you know, you'll come along and you'll say, well, 1 Peter 2.24 says, by his stripes we were healed. And somebody come back and say, yes, but that was talking about the spiritual disease of sin. And a lot of people go, oh, yeah, that's right. That's what's talking about, spiritual sin. Yet, Matthew says that when Jesus healed the physically ailed, the physically diseased, and healed them, that that was a, that was a fulfillment of the prophecy of Isaiah, which Peter quotes, by his stripes we were healed. Amen. And so, Bible's commentary on it is Isaiah 53 was referring to physical sicknesses when it was talking about sickness. And so, when Peter quotes that and says, by whose stripes ye were healed, he's not making a reference to the spiritual sin, sickness of sin. He is making reference to physical ailments, physical disease, physical sicknesses. He does deal with sin in the first part of 1 Peter 2.24. Amen. Mm -hmm whose own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness. And so Peter deals with two things that Jesus bore at the cross, sin and sickness. Dad Hagen used to preach a sermon called sickness, Healing and uh, Forgiveness, God's Double Cure. Well, uh, you, you can't get any better than that. We just, we just uh, talked about James last week. Uh, our Sunday night, actually Sunday night, remember the first Sunday of the month is, is communion and healing service. And it says, let him call for the elders of the church. Amen. And the prayer of faith, the anointing of oil. Isn't that right? It says that the anointing with oil, prayer of faith shall save the sick. And if he's committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Yeah. God, God's just as willing to forgive you your sins as he is to heal your body. Remember Jesus. 
Um, now he upset folk. Yeah. Lord, have mercy. He upset people with his doctrine. They got a guy laying there, sick, impotent from his feet, let down through the roof. You know, I mean, you talking about somebody coming up with a song, Up on the Roof, those guys were the first ones to come up with, Up on the Roof. <laughs> then they let him down in the middle of them. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. And Jesus goes and says, Thy sins be forgiven thee. Now that upset them. Mm -hmm. Who can forgive sins but God alone? And Jesus said that you may know that the Son of Man on earth has power on earth to forgive sins. He saith unto the sick of the palsy, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. And immediately he leaped up and began to walk. Yeah. Now how can that be? Well, I like to say it this way. Um, same sacrifice, different application. Mm -hmm. Jesus was a sacrifice for our sin. Jesus was a sacrifice for our sickness. And so at the same time he bore our sin, he bore our sicknesses. Amen. And so therefore the very same sacrifice that procured forgiveness and redemption is the same sacrifice that procured healing and health. Glory to God. Amen. At the same time, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Did you know, until Adam committed high treason in the garden, that man never knew sickness? Sickness was not normal among man. God, man, God didn't make it so man could be sick. Yeah. Sin brought sickness into the earth, and that, which is why the Jews believed. You remember, um, uh, the, Jesus came by as a man born blind, and, and uh, the disciples said, uh, Master, who did sin, this man or his mother, or, or father or mother, that he was born blind? And Jesus said, neither. Right. He goes on and says, but that the, the, but the works of God might be made manifest, you know, he, he for such a time, he, he, and he didn't say for such a time as this, but he said that the works of God might be manifest, I must work the works while I'm here, while the light's here. And then he healed him, made him, and he, he, he came away seeing. But notice the Jews had a theology that if you were sick or something, then you sinned. Either you or your parents and brought that into the land. Now, here's, here's the depth. Um, where, where is that? Because um, I wasn't in my notes. <laughs> don't you just love it when you come to the come and you don't, you don't have it in your notes and then you want to share something. Somebody know where it is? Real quick. Y'all got her yet? Come on, church. The, the, where, where the um, man was born blind and they asked him who did sin, this man or his parents. John 9. All right. John 9, 1, as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth, and the disciples asked, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? And Jesus said, Neither hath this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest to him. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is still day. The night cometh when no man can work as long as I am in the light. I am the light of the world. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground, made clay of the spittle, nor of the eyes of the blind man with the clay. So go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. He went his way therefore and washed and came seeing. All right, real quick here. Here's your Bible lesson for the night. You always have people come along here and they'll use this passage to show that God makes people sick so he can, you know, so he can work some kind of good work. And so, but reading that, it says this. It says, Master, who did sin, this, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus said, neither hath this man sin or his parents. But, but, that the works of God should be made manifest to him, I must work the works of him that sent me. <clears throat> now, he did not say he was made blind so that Jesus could work the works. Right. He said, but that I, must, I must work the works of him that sent me, so I'm going to do, I must work those works. But he didn't say that that man is born blind in order for him to do that. Um, you know, punctuation in the Greek sometimes it was really at the, a lot of times at the, uh, at the discretion of the translator. And you put a, put a period or a comma in one place and totally change the meaning of something um, that shouldn't have been that way. Neither this man has sinned or his parents 
colon in the statement, in the thought, now is another thought that, you know, related to what? Related to what Jesus said. He says, but that the works of God should be manifest to him. What? If the, but the works of God must be manifest in what? I must work the works of him that sent me. Not, uh, uh, let me say something here. If you take the position that God makes people sick and does stuff so that he can, some greater good can come out of it, then why aren't we getting the results they got here? Even if you took that position, the guy got healed. Hello? Even if you take that position that God made him blind so he could heal him and prove he's God, he got healed. Most people go around talking about the fact that God made him sick and God put something on Ain't never getting nothing. Oh, that's horrible English, isn't it? Ain't never getting nothing. That's a triple negative, so that goes back to negative. You know, negative, negative, back to positive, and the negative again goes back. You go, ain't never getting nothing. That means they didn't, get, they didn't get anything. All right? Hallelujah. Triple negative in one sentence. Praise God. Four words, I had a triple negative. I'm good. There's not many people that could do that and pull it off with the class that I did. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. And make it say what I wanted it to say. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, y'all got people running around claiming that God made them a certain way but never getting healed. This guy got healed. I honestly believe what Jesus did, he just answered their question. Neither this man sinned nor his parents. End the discussion. Now, but that I must work the works of him that sent me. Amen. But that the works of God may be manifest, I must work. In other words, in order for the works of God to be manifest in the man and heal him, Jesus must do the works of what, that the one who sent him to do. He must do those works. What were they? To heal. Remember the Bible says he went round about their villages teaching in the synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all manner of sickness and disease among the people. Amen. Jesus had a ministry of preaching, teaching, and healing. Now we know he did other things, but you know that, that's, 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 the, that's the, the, the primary import of his ministry was to preach, teach, and heal. Everybody say preach, teach, and heal. Preach, teach, and heal. Why? Healing is like the children's bread. It's the dinner bell. You start getting folks well, they'll start showing up. Yeah. Philip went down to Samaria and preached Christ unto them. Look over in Acts chapter 5. Or Acts chapter 8. Philip went down to Samaria and preached Christ unto them. The people giving heed to the things which he said, both hearing and seeing the miracles which he wrought. Go, don't take my word for it. Go over there. We're, we're going to run off here and leave you in the dust and you know, kind of coming from the assumption you've heard these things before. And it's okay if you have. Acts, Acts uh, chapter 8 verse 5 says, Then Philip went down into the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. Now, uh, a few years ago we had, um, you know, some people defining the word Christ. The word Christ as the anointed one in his anointing. And, you know, it does mean the anointed one. Christos is the Greek uh, for the Hebrew uh, Hamashiach, which meant Messiah, which th they were titles. It wasn't the last name. Yeshua HaMashiach or Jesus Christ, the Greek, the, 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 the uh, transliteral English of the Greek, Jesus Christ. Messiah is a transliteration of HaMashiach. Okay, Yeshua. Joshua, literally. Uh, the English version is Joshua. Jehoshua. Okay. Many, so, Yeshua HaMashiach and Jesus Christ mean the same thing. Jesus, the anointed one. The anointed one. See, it's not his last name. It is what he is. The anointed one. And so we began to define the term Christ as the anointed one in his anointing. What does this anointing do? Well, the Bible tells us that the yoke shall be destroyed and the bird removed because of the anointing. So the anointing destroys yokes and removes burdens. Amen. And so Jesus, glory to God, he went down and preached Christ. He preached the anointed one with his yoke destroying, burden removing power. And listen to what happened. He began to preach about one that was anointed to destroy the yokes of bondage and remove them out of people's lives. And they gave heed to him. Glory to God. And they gave heed unto him the things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits crying with loud voice. I mean, you got women talking with guy voices and guys talking with girl voices. We call that normal today. Anyway, did I say that? Anyway, 
<laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Came out of men that were possessed with them. See, back then they used to call it demon possessed and not having a girl locked up in a guy's body. Anyway, I'm just a man locked up in a woman's body. <clears throat> right. You're sick. You, you, you need help. We can cast that thing out of you. You can get free. All right, that went over so good. Everybody's excited about that. And many taken with palsies and that were lame were healed. And listen to what happened. When people got the devil cast out, when people that had palsies were healed, people that were lame got healed, there was great joy in that city. There was great joy in that city. You see, when the anointed one manifests and destroys yokes and removes burdens, it brings joy. You take someone who's dealing, who's living under the cloud of depression and let them have an encounter with the yoke-destroying, burden-removing power of God through Jesus Christ and be liberated from that, there's great joy in their life. Hallelujah. People are bound with, uh, you know, uh, uh, what's that word? Hallelujah. When you're sick long term, you know, long time and then terminal, not terminal, not terminal, but um, there's another word that's used when you have something that's ongoing. We'll come to it some point in time. But people have been sick a long time. <laughs> there's another word that we can use for that. And it's not just terminal, there's another word. <clears throat> Somebody come up with it. Come on. Brains are working out there. I knew the iPhones were out. People are looking up on the internet. <laughs> Hallelujah. My girls are sitting in class and they're putting on Facebook stuff the instructor's saying. Well, I used to get upset about it. I, I thought I would go and get upset about it until I saw Craig Hagan talking about posting during church services stuff that's going on in church. And, and Sister Lynette doing it. I'm thinking, everybody does it there. Yeah. Okay, go ahead, girls. <laughs> okay. But you know, people, people who, who are a long time, you remember um, the man who was impotent from his mother's womb? Bob, Bob says he, he knew he'd been a long time in that way. When he got here, we, he went leaping, shouting for joy. He had, had, I'm telling you, he'll bring joy to you for the, the ability to destroy yokes and remove burdens in your life. You're bound by something and you get free from it, it's joy. Sick for a long term, time and get free from it, it's joy. Are you here? You're going home. Hallelujah. Don't turn us off. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, when you're bound and you, you, come, in, you come in contact with the anointing and it liberates you and sets you free, it destroys that yoke and removes that burden, glory to God, then there is joy in your life. You take somebody that's been in debt, <clears throat> somebody come along and pay off the house and pay off the cars and bring them the title and bring them, bring them the bank notes, they'll have them a party and burn that stuff, baby, how do they, not the, not the title, the notes. Yeah. Yeah. You don't burn the title. <clears throat> Hallelujah. And there's a dancing party going on. Hallelujah, I don't have to pay that mortgage every month anymore. I don't have to pay that car payment anymore. Glory to God. I don't have to pay that credit card payment anymore. Glory to God. When I see when that, when you're free from that, it brings joy. And when you get free from the bondage of Satan, when you get free from all the works of the enemy, glory to God, it'll bring joy. Think of a whole city experiencing that. I mean, the demon-possessed folks have gone free. I mean, the guys who are out like girls start acting like men. Yeah. There's, there's, a, there's a, a restaurant, a fast food service. I, got. I can't hardly even go in there anymore. Every time I go in, they got this guy out there, and he, he walks around twisting like a girl and talking to you like a girl, and I figured that one day, that's a guy. And it just messed me up. <laughs> I'm like, I, 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 get, get him free, and I'll bring joy. I can go back to that restaurant again. I don't have to watch him twist. Like, Lord, help me. No, help him. That's not politically correct. <laughs> so, you think I care? I'm the most un-PC people you'll ever meet. I don't care about political correctness. Yeah. I'm not bound by everybody else's definition of what I should or shouldn't say. Yeah. But you get somebody free of something they thought they couldn't get free of. And suddenly there's joy. You take a whole town that's bound. 
Now, if you go study this a little, little bit further in the same chapter, you'll find out there was a sorcerer running around bewitching the whole town. Yeah, yeah. And they were all in captivity to his sorceries. They thought he had the power of God. Y'all remember years ago, you used to have this woman who, was a, who called herself a prophetess, not the prophetess of, of the Lord Jesus Christ. And she said her gift came from God. And every year in January, she'd tell you what was going to happen that year. And she's only about 50 or 60 percent right. Now, I don't know about you. If I had the choice, okay, they took me up on top of the building and said, now listen, you can jump off and you won't get hurt. And I'm, 50, I'm right 50% of the time. Those are just not odds I'm willing to take. You let Christians say something's going to happen and they don't, at one time, they're a liar. You know? Y'all hear? But this whole town was brought into captivity to this guy. He worked sorceries and he captured the whole town. Then Philip came down and started preaching Jesus. And then people started getting healed. Lame folks started getting healed. People palsy started getting healed. Devil possessed folks. The devils came out of them. They were normal. Hallelujah. And there was great joy in that city. Glory to God. God's power, God's anointing to deliver people, to deliver humanity, brings joy. Remember what the psalmist said over in the psalm, uh, <clears throat> I believe it's Psalm 126. I'm sorry, I just coughed on that. I got a little phlegm in the back of my throat there. Hallelujah. We're working some kinks out on our um, video in here. Look at this name. When the Lord, Psalm 126, 1. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter, and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the heathen, the Lord has done great things for them. And the Lord has done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Now, some folks read that and go, oh, it's a hard old way whereof we're sad. You got others good over there. You start getting folks healed and they say, whereof we're mad. There's some people get mad because they get people get healed. Yeah. yeah. You know, lay hands on somebody and get folks healed and people get mad with you. That's the devil in operation. I mean, that's the devil. We prayed in the name of Jesus. We said we gave God the glory. The devil's not going to do anything to give Jesus and God the glory. Are you here? He's going to bring attention to himself. Hallelujah. So it says when the Lord turned the captivity of Zion. Well, think about that now. If the Lord turned the captivity of the Zion and they were glad, what happens to those who experience the yoke destroying, burden removing power of Jesus, the Christ, hallelujah, the Son of the living God, the Alpha, the Omega, the first and the last, amen? He who was dead and now alive. Rick Renner shared this other night when he, at, at the men's conference out in Tulsa. He said, it actually says there, he was dead for just a little while. Hallelujah. Just for just a fleeting moment, he was dead. Glory to God. But now he's alive forevermore. <laughs> Woo, glory. That part of the devil and his host were having was short-lived. It didn't last real long. Y'all ever heard Carmen's you know, Sunday's on the way? Yeah. Or, you know, Sunday's on the way by Carmen, whatever Carmen's last name is. It's, uh, just Carmen, the, don't even try, I'm not even going to try. I, 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 I've seen it, I've read it, I've heard him say it. That's okay, Julie. He just calls himself Carmen, that's why he calls himself Carmen. The power of God to bring humanity out of defeat into life, out of sickness into health, brings joy, glory to God. Yeah, I've never seen anybody walk away from a healing line that got healed going, doggone it, I'm still, I'm well, I'm mad, I got well. I ain't ever seen that happen. I've never seen anybody get mad that they got well. They, they might have been mad when they showed up. But when they got healed, they got happy. Y'all remember the story Dad Hagen used to tell about the man up in the balcony? Said this woman had an unsaved husband and she, she prayed for years. And she pleaded with him for years. 
try to get him to come to church. Oh, she prayed. She pleaded. She begged. Finally, uh, Brother Hagin was doing a meeting in the church, and he, he came to the meeting. And they're up in the balcony. And he started praying for people. And they started falling out in the power. And he started just saying stuff out loud. Oh, he's just pushing them down. I don't believe in that. Just out loud. And after a few minutes of that, she got kind of embarrassed and, and almost wished she hadn't even brought him. And he was talking, and, and, and he was ministering, and so when the guy stepped back and started talking about the power and the glory, and all of a sudden, he got talking about the power and the glory, and that man started going, it's a going all over me. It's a going all over me. It's a going all over me. His wife said, what? He said, that a power he's talking about. It's a going all over me. He had a heart disease, got healed. He, he won't mad anymore. Yeah. He didn't sit up there and say, hey, I, I ain't real, that's fake. I don't believe that. All of a sudden, he started, it's a going all over me. It's a going all over me. Well, why? See, you come in, you, when, when you come in contact with the power of God, it changes everything. I said it changes everything. The power and the anointing of God changes everything. It changes your perspective when you come in contact with it. And in the case of Philip going down to Samaria and preaching Christ, it break, brought great joy to that city. When, Zion, when these people here, the, uh, the psalmist is talking about, when they experienced that power, when the Lord turned again the captivity, was that the anointing came into life and set them free from something? Whether it was setting them free as a nation or as a people or individuals, they were set free. When that happened, their mouth was filled with laughter and their tongue with singing. Ooh, glory. Ever been blessed? Amen. Ever had God just do something and bless your socks off? <laughs> and you just can't shut up. You can't, uh, can't stop talking about it. Yeah. Can't stop singing about it. Can't stop running and dancing. Praise God. Why? Because your captivity was turned. I said your captivity was turned. Come on now, I said your captivity was turned. Yeah. Now, here's what we now, this, now In the Old Testament, they would wait until they got it turned. For the New Testament believer, we need to be doing it before we see it turned. We call it turned before it happens. Mm -hmm. yeah. We got one Bill Bailey, amen. <laughs> That's the resounding amen you hear across the room. Yes, amen. That's right. Hallelujah. All right. If you girls start talking like that, we're going to start casting. All right. So Philip went down into Samaria and preached Christ. Miracle signs and warnings started happening. And they, began, they did what? I find it interesting. The Bible says they gave heed, both hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. The miracles brought a realization, an actualization to, their, to them that this is, this, is, this is real. This is God. Now, I know you got people talking about, well, I have to have intelligent faith. Let me say something here. Going and watching the movie on the Shroud of Turin doesn't mean squat. Uh -huh. Well, they, they, they carbon dated it and it's actually the image of Jesus Christ or not. doesn't mean anything. No, it doesn't. Amen. I remember back when I was, uh, I guess I was about 18 or 19, uh, the Mormons put out a movie. Uh, I believe it may have been called The Shroud of Turin. And they talked about Jesus at 12 left and he went off on a caravan and traveled around the world, made clay pigeons and they became alive and he traveled all over the world. He disappeared and showed up in South America and North America and all these places. And then at 30, he showed back up home for his ministry. He was in caravans traveling all those years. You know, and he would make pigeons and make them, he'd breathe them, they'd take off flying and all this kind of stuff. <laughs> well, it's the same movie, they did the thing on the Shroud of Turin to try to prove that it was Jesus, they've carbon dated it. And, and you know, and the, and the church that has it in storage only lets it come out every 25 or 30 years or whatever for it to be studied. I don't care. Because my faith is not in an image bur burned onto a piece of cloth. Amen. It's like Rick Renner said, you know, you go to the, 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 the Church of the Infant or whatever it is there in Bethlehem. And they take you down into the bottom. And right here on the spot, there's a, there's a gold medallion in the floor. And that's right there where Jesus popped out. Now, how do they know that? Yeah. You can't even go back to the spot you were born 30 years ago and the exact location in the hospital to find where you popped out. Hello. 
Y'all hear you going home. Our, our, the, what brings joy is not that we have archaeological evidence. We don't have, my faith is not, see, faith isn't intelligent to start with. There's something unintelligent about faith. Yeah, yeah. Faith is not of the head, it's of the heart. It believes things that the mind can't get a hold of. Yeah, that's right. To believe that God took on flesh and blood and walked among us for 33 years, the mind can't grasp. Right. That he died on the cross and shed his blood, was separated from the Father, became sin for us, who knew no sin, was tormented, and our judgment was laid on him. And then God said it's enough, and he was born again, is more than the mind can grasp. That he was raised up, picked up his body, went up to heaven, took his blood, and put it on the mercy seat of God, sat down at the right hand, wherever he makes intercession for us, is more than the mind can grasp. It's not intelligence. The just shall live by faith. Amen. It believes things that the mind just can't put its arms around. Amen. So we're out there trying to get people to have intelligent faith when we should just be getting out there and getting them full of faith. Amen. And then renew your mind yes. so it'll think like what the heart believes. Yes, that's right. Renewing the mind. Amen. But if you've got to have all your registries right, computer talk. Oh. Yeah, yeah, old computer talk. <laughs> yeah, but, but, uh, brother, yeah. Oh, it feels great. Pastor talked about registries. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Every sector connected properly. Amen. Oh, yeah, we're going to see him go ahead for it, right? Praise God. <clears throat> Your VTOC, depending on the machine you were using, your volume table of context, I know they call it a fat library, you used to call it a fat library on the PCs, file allocation tables. If you've got to have all that right in your head before you'll believe you're going to be in trouble. Mm -hmm. Now here's the thing. I, I heard Mark Brzee say this a long time ago. Uh, he said, and he probably quoted Dad Hagen on this, but I, did, I was in a service where he was saying, and it just kind of burned in my conscience when he said it. You know, faith, well actually Dad did say it, I'm sorry. Um, what Mark said was, and remember when the man came down and said, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief? Mm -hmm. what, he, what he was saying is, Lord, I believe my head's giving me a fit. Right. And then Dad Hagen said this, Dad Hagen said, he said, faith will work in your, you can have faith in your heart and doubt in your head and it'll still work. Mm -hmm. right. You can have faith in your heart and doubt in your head and it'll still work. Let me say this, you can be persuaded in your mind and have no faith in your heart and it won't work. You can have mental assent in your head and no faith in your heart and it won't work. Because yeah. faith is a spiritual force. Yeah. Amen. So Philip went down to Samaria and preached the anointing one his anointings and began to work miracle signs and wonders. And the people believed. And put the sorcerer out of business, dude. He couldn't, he couldn't bewitch people anymore. As a matter of fact, he got so caught up what he believed. Yeah. They got more power than I got. Amen. Then when Peter, Peter and John showed up and started laying hands on them, getting to feel the Holy Ghost speaking in other tongues, he tried to buy it. He tried to buy that. He, th he thought, man, oh man, here's how I'm going to make a living now because I can't make a living the old way. Yeah. Of course, Peter reproved him, rebuked him, and it didn't, it didn't go well for him. But praise the Lord. <laughs> healing, healing is part of the gospel. Yeah. Now the gospel is not healing, but it's part of it. Yeah. It's a part of what God intended. We got so many churches that don't even believe that God wants it. Now they'll say God can. Yes, we believe the Lord can heal. But, in most cases, he ain't nobody even going to get close to getting healed. Why? You ought to hear him pray. Lord, if it be your will. What does the Bible say? By his stripes we were healed. Amen. I said amen. God came to Jesus one day and said, Master, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. Now that's King James for this. I know you can, but I don't know if you're willing to or not. And Jesus said, I will be thou made whole. 
The question was not, see, that's never. You can get an agnostic and say, can God heal? And they'll go, well, you know, if there were a God, then I suppose he could heal because he would be God and be greater. Now, I don't, I don't know if there's a God or not. I say, they don't know. Bless the hearts. You see about walking around in a cloud of stupidity. I don't know if there's a God or not. I, I tell you what, I, I'll, I'll keep, you, know, you turn television on, they got these science channels. And you see all the, the creation and all the, the species and all the variety and diversity of creation. And, and of the earth and of the animal kingdom and of the plant kingdom and all this kind of stuff. And you look up there and you go, and some dodo brain believes that there was some cosmic explosion umpteen billion years ago. And through this mass out there in the middle, it spun long enough that it developed, uh, you know, a core. And then developed a surface with water. And then the water separated from the land and oxygen filled the atmosphere. All out of cosmic nothing. And then one day... From atmospheric conditions or whatever, there was a spark of energy and it created a, a micro amoeba type cell. And from that one spark, everything else you see came. Man, if you ever get the people saved, they would, they would move mountains into the ocean. You talk about faith. Faith in your belief that you can look out there and see all that. And everything kept evolving and, 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 and separating and, you know, and, and, men, and males separated from females for reproductive purposes. How long did they live for that to happen? Yeah. Well, it's always interesting to me. You don't have any monkeys becoming men. There's only one. See, the fallacy in the, you know, their, whole doc, their whole belief system is everything only happened once. Yeah. Then why don't we have men becoming something they're not? Another species. There'll be some man or woman somewhere on the planet evolving into some other type of being if everything keeps evolving into something else. Mm -hmm. Or it takes so long we don't see the micro, you know, changes. It takes billions of years. You are full of faith. <laughs> Shame on you. Shame on you. You thought I was going to say something else. Like bovine excrement or whatever. <laughs> Praise God. They gotta, it takes great faith to believe that. Stupid faith. I just, how can you believe all that happened? All the diversity came because each little thing kept some. It's a whole lot easier to just believe, you know, there's a master creator, yeah. master designer, reached down and formed everything and made it all happen. Well, because we created life in the test tube. It took intelligence to get that spark. It took an intelligent being putting all that right stuff together with the right this and the right that with the right spark to make it happen. And what I want to know is it still living is it, and is it becoming something else? Anyway. Hallelujah. So God uses healing as a witness and a testimony of his goodness, of his mercy, of the healing power, of, of the resurrection of Jesus. Remember Jesus told them to go and in my name you'll lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. Why? Because he wanted, he wanted it to be a situation where speaking his name and then the miracle of the sign of wonder gave testimony to his resurrection. Why? So people would believe and come into the kingdom. Not intelligent faith, but faith. Faith, faith. Amen. Faith, faith. Bible faith. Hallelujah. From preaching the word. I had somebody say on Facebook the other day to me, the, word, the Bible is not the word. Jesus is the word. Well, you're half true. Yeah. The Bible calls itself the word. So I guess it is the word. Jesus is the word. Amen. Thy word is a light unto my path, a lamp unto my feet. Well, we're we'll talking about Jesus. Jesus won't even hear then. We're talking about the scriptures. Yeah. 
Yeah, people are getting crazy out there, man. Let's stay, with, let's stay with this. Preaching the truth, preaching the gospel, let, ministering to the sick and watching God minister to them and let them have an encounter with the glory. Let them have an encounter with the healing power of God. I'm telling you, pray for the sick. You know, listen, you don't need to get folks saved to pray for them. Pray for, the, pray for unsaved sick folk. Amen. And don't tell them to have faith. Right. About 20 years ago, y'all, some of y'all remember the, uh, the, the crew. They had this guy up in a city north of here, and him and his son walk around and go, He generation of vipers and snakes. Kid go outside the principal's office under his window and just hold his Bible and scream that he was a generation of vipers and snakes. <laughs> well, that made national news. I mean, the kid got kicked out of school. The dad stand on the street corners in our in our city and do that. People ride by, and he'd be out there like a like a crippled man going, "You generation of vipers and snakes, we're all going to hell." And so this guy had his talk show, late night talk show, with the big mouth on it. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know who it was. Yeah. Trying not to put it on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, brother. <laughs> I don't think my mic picked that up, so we're good. But it was somebody, somebody, somebody. Junior. <laughs> All right. And he, he, had, he, he, got, he got this guy out there, and he got this other little healing evangelist on there. This kid was about 10 or 11. Uh-huh. Little white boy with an with a, with a afro. With a, with a bow tie tuxedo. And uh, and I don't know why it was, but you know you could you could send, you could send somebody out there to a crowd of African Americans like that, and and they thought they you know just I don't know what it was, I don't know the dynamics of it, but they thought he was great, uh-huh. and that's because that's mainly what he ministered. He ministered in African American meetings, little white boy with his afro, and they they, they just I just messed up the lighting, didn't I? <laughs> but they, they just loved him. And so he, he goes, well, you know, how do you, been, how do you get people, out? well, I pray for them. You, you, you heal people. You, just, you, you can't, we don't, we don't heal anybody. Number one, you can't heal, and that's the anointing that destroys the yokes and moves, moves the burdens. It's not the man. Yeah. It's not your afro and your bow tie. Yeah. Amen? And it's not your, that, that look that you try to come up with. It. And it's almost like what we, we refer to as gimmick preacher look. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Got his fr- white dude, little, little white dude with a fro and a bow tie. And he's going to, you know, he said, well, so, somebody, somebody got a problem here. You got a hurt arm. Come up here. Heal him. So you, you don't cast your pearl before swine. You don't let the world challenge you to something. When the devil tried to challenge Jesus, he would say it's also written. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. So this kid goes up to this guy and says, now, have faith. And of course, I'm sitting there going, Oh, brother. He's going to try to talk this man into getting into faith before he prays for him. So you don't get sinners into faith to pray for him. You just lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. And then they'll get saved. Amen. Amen. Healing is a sign of the power and the glory of God. And of the resurrection of Jesus, well, let's make sure we use it the right way. Let's be, don't be stupid. We don't need to be dumber than dirt. Just say it. We need to be intelligent about, no, when I say intelligent, I mean Bible intelligence. Do it what God says, do the way God says, do it when God says do it. Well, he anointed me to heal, say, I'm going to empty out the hospital. Jesus didn't. What, make, what makes you think if Jesus didn't, you can? Show me where Jesus emptied out the hospital. As a matter of fact, the one day he showed up at the hospital, Solomon's porch, there were all kinds of sick, and only one guy got healed, and he walked off. Amen. And if anybody could have emptied out the hospital, guess who it was? Amen. It would have been Jesus. But he didn't. Well, because that wasn't, he wasn't, God didn't lead him that way. The Father didn't lead him that way. Then when Philip went down to Samaria and Christ and started preaching, notice he, the people with palsies, 
people that were lame and people that were possessed with devils all got set free. It doesn't say anything about blind eyes, deaf ears, cancers, palsies, lame, and demon possessed. Wow, that's what his anointing was on. You go study Brother Hagen. Brother Hagen had a high success rate with tumors and growths. Branham was, was, was deaf, and blind, deaf and dumb. Blind people. Different healing evangelists could pray for, pray for nine out of ten that were blind would be healed. Come along cancer, something that may not have that kind of success. Brother Hagen had tremendous success with growth and cancers and, and tumors. That was his gift. That was gifts of healings. Yeah. We're kind of stepping over here into another place right now. That's good. But let's, 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 let's go minister life. Let's lay hands on the sick. Let it be the dinner bell. Call people in. Amen. Let's be a blessing in the earth. Amen. 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 All right. We'll see tonight's offering. We're going to go home.